Yeah, let us uh, start from where we left yesterday, uh, maybe in the last lecture. I hope my voice is audible to you. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, uh, in the last lecture, we were uh, trying to calculate this equivalent resistance for the MOSFET, right? And we identified two operating regions that is VDD to VDD by 2. So, two operating regions we identified and we concluded that the equivalent resistance would be given by this relation, right? Now, this equivalent resistance when uh, this is plotted with respect to VDD using the same uh, relation when I try to let me make my screen bigger so when I try to plot the same equivalent resistance versus VDD so I find that uh, you know at, at a point at a certain point maybe between this range 1.5 to 2.5 volt for example here so you will see that VDD, you know, raising the VDD has no effect on R equivalent or equivalent resistance, right? And this is also uh, the situation, the condition when, uh, yeah, so VDD has no effect here in this range. So R equivalent is uh, small here. Okay. The MOSFET is on. And when your VDD, so VDD is also here gate, yeah, gate is applied with this VDD, right? So obviously when VDD that is gate voltage is high, resistance will be small, right? And when the gate voltage is, let's say zero, so the gate, the resistance will be very high. So similar effect can be seen here through the simulation that VDD has no effect in this range, right? But as the VDD approaches this threshold point, maybe somewhere here at this point, somewhere here at this point, 0.5 volt, threshold voltage. So at this point, you see that the VDD, sorry, the R equivalent, this increases rapidly. Okay. And this is the situation where, you know, the threshold voltage lies and beyond this, if you move further, uh, very high resistances are possible. The channel resistance, because channel, res channel is not formed in this case. Okay. Now, from the previous relation, you will also notice that this R equivalent so this is also dependent on the W by L ratio of the MOSFET. Okay. So in this R equivalent, you will see that uh, in the denominator, there is ID sat appearing over here and this depends on W by L. Right so here, this one. So ID sat depends on W by L. So that means W by L if is increased, Okay, if you increase W by L here, so that means R equivalent should come down. Okay. So that means if you increase W, your resistance of the MOSFET, so that will reduce, right? So you reduce W, your MOSFET resistance will, so you increase W, or maybe you reduce W, MOSFET resistance will increase. Or if you increase W, and the MOSFET resistance will reduce. Okay, so from here itself, this can be identified. So R equivalent that is on resistance of the MOSFET depends on the W or W by L ratio, and it also depends on VDD that is applied uh, bias at the gate. And since since VDD is applied here, so we say that it also depends on the applied bias at the gate. Now, this table presents equivalent resistance of NMOS and PMOS transistors. Okay. So, equivalent resistance of NMOS and PMOS transistors in 0.25 micron CMOS process. Okay. And these resistances are presented for a W by L ratio of 1. Okay. So, for a W by L ratio of 1, uh, we have values of, for example, NMOS transistor 
and at VDD. So these are for different VDDs. So this is for VDD 1 volt, 1.5 volts, 2 volts and 2.5 volts. So for 1 volt, the NMOS equivalent resistance is 35 kilo ohms. Similarly, for PMOS, PMOS being slower, the equivalent resistance comes out to be somewhere around 115 kilo ohms. Okay. Now, these are for W by L of 1. Okay. Now, if you find, if you want to find out the equivalent resistance of MOSFETs which have W by L larger than 1, maybe let's say W by L, you want to find for W by L is equal to 2 or maybe 3. Right. So simply you'll have to divide these resistances by the W by L ratios. So if I want to find it for W by L of 2, for this MOS and MOS, I'll divide 35 by 2. So that will give me 17.5 as the resistance. Okay. Similarly, uh, 3, if I want to find for 3 and for a VDD of 2 volts, okay, and a W by L ratio of 3, so I'll simply divide 15 divided by 3. So that is 5 kilo ohms. So that would be the NMOS equivalent resistance. So this table is useful, but this table is only uh, valid for 0.25 micron CMOS process. So for every uh, change in technology, these resistances also change. Now apart from resistance, the MOSFET resistance apart from this, uh, we have the MOSFET capacitance also, so that also needs calculation. In fact, the dynamic behavior of the MOSFET, so that depends largely on these MOSFET internal capacitances. Okay. So what are these capacitances and how to calculate the value of these capacitances is a topic of interest because these will be utilized heavily in our uh, course, digital IC design course. Okay. So let us try to define first these capacitances. Uh, so in a MOSFET, for example, in an NMOS, let's say, so we have these many sources of capacitances that can exist. Okay. So for example, you may have a capacitance between gate to bulk, okay. a gate to bulk capacitance, or maybe source to bulk capacitance between source and bulk. Then between drain and bulk, drain to bulk capacitance. Then between gate and source. So you have gate to source and similarly gate to drain capacitance between the gate and drain. And now all these capacitances, they appear because of the structure of the MOSFET. Okay. So the structure of the MOSFET, uh, you know, defines the origin of these capacitances. So in fact, uh, let me take one screen and try to define these capacitances. So let us say I have an NMOS again and I have two channels N plus N plus source and drain diffusion regions. Let me call this N plus and P substrate. So now let us try to define the same capacitances over here. Let's say my silicon dioxide and then polygate. So I have, first of all, a capacitance between gate and bulk because, you know, to make a capacitor, you need two plates which are separated by a dielectric. So in this scenario, if I see from gate to bulk, I have one plate is this one and that is gate, polygate and the other plate could be my P-type substrate. Okay. And then in between, I have a dielectric or a separation right or silicon dioxide is acting as a dielectric in between so that means i'll have a capacitor here so let me call this capacitor as or maybe i'll take another uh, this thing so i'll call this capacitor as let us say gate to bulk capacitor so i say that this is my gate to bulk capacitor cgb so similarly uh, the drain and source regions. Yeah, this is my source region. So this source extends under the gate. Okay? And this is because of uh, the process actually defines it. We don't want the source to extend under the gate, but process is such that, uh, you know, the source and drain diffusion regions, they 
extend under the gate so when they extend under the gate so here also you are finding similar kind of topology here that is you have one plate over here that is gate and the second plate that is uh, source diffusion region right so i'll have a capacitance over here also so i say that one plate is my gate and the other plate is my source diffusion region and let us call this as cgs so similarly i have cgd that is between gate and drain okay so this is cgd oh sorry cgd that is gate to drain now we also have a depletion region here around the diffusion regions that is source and drain so we had already discussed while discussing the diode that these depletion regions are associated with again uh, the junction capacitance or depletion region capacitance okay so for example here similarly you will see that uh, this n plus region will act as one plate and p type substrate will act as another plate so i'll have a capacitor again here between drain and bulk so this is my capacitor between drain and bulk so i call it let us say cdb sorry this is source so i'll call it uh, source to bulk so let me say that this is my source to bulk capacitance so similar to this i have another capacitance from the drain side this is drain to bulk capacitance so five capacitances have been defined right that is gate to source then gate to bulk gate to drain and source to bulk and drain to bulk right so all these capacitances uh, in fact the, these junction capacitances especially they are uh, non linear so they keep on changing with the applied biases so you apply for example a reverse bias across the drain to bulk junction the depletion region here widens so this capacitance also changes its value similarly when you apply a gate voltage here at this point okay, so the depletion region under the gate uh, you know comes up into picture okay and then you also have a channel over here then you you don't have a connection to the bulk here now the second plate of this capacitor that is cgb so that will be now channel channel will be the second plate so these capacitances vary with the applied biases right let me go back to the same uh, here we define uh, these capacitances that is they are existing between gate and source then gate and drain drain and bulk source and bulk right and gate and bulk so five capacitances we have defined now how to calculate calculate their values so that is important now let us try to understand how to calculate their values okay. so for gate capacitance calculation as i said that uh, this drain and source region source and drain region they uh, you know uh, we have a overlap of gate over source and drain because source and drain region they extend under the gate so i have this overlap here okay, this region so this is my overlap this much similarly on the drain side i have an overlap so this overlap is represented in this layout okay so this is let's say the layout of my transistor source and drain regions are presented here with green uh, you know regions and this is my poly that is gate so these overlap regions are shown over here okay so this is my overlap region these two and let's say the overlap uh, you know uh, this overlap is for this much length that is xd so the total drawn length total drawn length of the transistor is ld but because of these two xd that is the overlap length the total length that is channel length that is appearing here now is ld minus 2 xd which is equal to l here right so the actual channel length is now l which is drawn length minus two times the over length yeah, please uh, mute your mic please mute your mics yeah so the drawn length is ld but because of this overlap 
I have the actual now length that is L channel length, which is L D minus two X D. Okay. So the oxide capacitance here, right? So oxide capacitance that is gate oxide capacitance. So this is given by this relation. That is C oxide is equal to epsilon ox by T ox. That is thickness of oxide. Yeah. So oxide capacitance is given by this relation. Okay. Now the gate capacitance, that is the capacitance of the gate, can be given. That is which is appearing between gate and the bulb. Okay. So that is that can be given by using this oxide capacitance. That is if you multiply this oxide capacitance by the area of the gate. That is W and L. Right. So L is the length of the channel length, and W is the width of the Uh, uh you know gate so the area of the gate is w times l so if you multiply this area which is appearing under the gate here by this oxide capacitance so you get the gate capacitance as epsilon ox by t ox by into wl then for the overlap capacitances right so that is these capacitances which are appearing over here that is your gate to source overlap capacitance and gate to drain overlap capacitances so these can be calculated by a similar uh, you know way that is uh, for example source to overlap capacitance if i want to call calculate i'll simply multiply oxide capacitance with the area under the overlap area of the gate under uh, you know uh, under the gate where the overlap is seen that is xd which is the overlap length and w that is the transistor's width or the gate width so if i do this i find gate to source overlap also and gate to drone drain overlap also since the mosfets are symmetric so we say that we have on the both sides we have uh, overlap of xd though the process variations could be there but yes for the time being let us say uh, that two overlap lengths are same so the gate to source overlap and the gate to drain overlap capacitances are equal to C ox that is oxide capacitance multiplied by area of the overlap that is X D times W. Now, if you say call C ox that is oxide capacitance multiplied by X D, so that is represented by C not let's say that is overlap capacitance. So again, this overlap capacitance is a foundry parameter, a industry parameter. You never specify this. The industry or the foundry which is fabricating for you, so that calculates it and that provides this value. That is overlap capacitance, which is equal to oxide capacitance multiplied by X D. That is the overlap length. Now it is always desirable to have high oxide capacitance, right? So that the current can also be, uh, you know, high. So you have seen in the previous equation that uh, uh, you you have uh, here that is K N prime. So that this is mu N C ox, right? So obviously, if oxide capacitance is large, then the current can also be, uh, you know, thought to be of a large value, greater value, right? So oxide capacitance is always uh, considered, or it is desirable to have a large oxide capacitance. Now, this oxide capacitance depends on these two values, that is, the dielectric constant of the oxide and also the thickness of the oxide. So that means, if by this relation, if I go, then uh, one would say that. Why not reduce the oxide thickness so that the oxide capacitance can be increased? So that's fine. So one can think about reducing the oxide thickness so that oxide capacitance can go, go grow up or go up. But then the problem would be that is you have thin oxide layer, so leakages are also possible. Yeah? That is gate to bulk leakages are possible if oxide thickness is small. Okay? So now to overcome this, that is to have uh you know this kind of uh, thing where you want lower oxide thickness so that oxide capacitance can be large so to overcome this effect that is you want to keep thin oxide you can raise this dielectric constant of the oxide so sio2 has uh, you know some dielectric constant which is calculated by relative permittivity of the free space multiplied by the dielectric constant of silicon that is 11.9 So similarly, there are other high, you know, dielectrics which have high dielectric constant or high K dielectric, what we call 
they match. So for example, hafnium dioxide, HFO2. So that can be utilized here. So if you raise the you know dielectric constant of the oxides, obviously the oxide capacitance can go up. Okay. So one way is to reduce the thickness, but then reducing thickness invites leakage current through the gate gate to bulb. So to overcome that, you increase the dielectric constant. That is, bring in high K dielectric uh, into this uh, fabrication of the MOSFET. So this capacitance can be calculated. That is, gate capacitance now depends on this relation and overlap capacitances they depend on this relation that is gate to source and gate to drone drain overlap capacitances can be calculated by these relations now uh, the gate capacitance the overall gate capacitance that can cal be calculated for different regions of operation okay? and for different regions of operations you will find that this gate capacitance differs okay? So, for example, in cut-in, sorry, cut-off, or maybe in linear region, or maybe in saturation, these have different values and contributions are also from different sources. So, for example, uh, let us say the MOSFET is in cut-off. So, that is, you don't have a channel over here, right? So, this picture presents a cut-off uh, region, that is MOSFET, which is in cut-off, that is, you don't have a channel between source and drain. Okay. Now, we want to find this gate capacitance or let us call it as gate to channel capacitance okay? because in other two cases I have channel only in this case I don't have a channel so let us call all these capacitances that is uh, appearing between gate and the bulk as gate to channel capacitance. Okay? So then we say that gate to channel capacitance this is gate to channel capacitance with contribution from the bulk so I say CGCB so that is gate to channel capacitance with contribution from bulb. Similarly, gate to channel capacitance with contribution from source side. Gate to channel capacitance with contribution from drain side. And this is total gate to channel capacitance, which is sum of these three capacitances. Okay. And then this is final total capacitance CG of the gate, which also considers the overlap capacitances, which we had calculated. So let us try to define these values for cutoff region. So for cutoff region, when there is no cha channel, that is now I have gate to channel capacitance via bulk only. Yeah, second plate is now bulk. Okay. So I say gate to channel capacitance via bulk contribution because second plate is now bulk in this case, cutoff. So that is equal to oxide capacitance multiplied by W and L of the transistor. Yeah. Similar to uh, what we had here, this one. That is oxide capacitance multiplied by uh, W and L, right? Now in this scenario, I don't have a contribution from the source side or from the drain side because I don't have a channel over here. Okay. So total gate to channel capacitance is if I add these three, so it becomes C ox W L. And if I bring in the overlap capacitances into picture, then total gate capacitance can be given by this oxide capacitance W L plus 2 times C0W. Okay. So earlier in the previous picture, we had calculated the gate to source overlap and gate to drain overlap capacitance as C0W. Okay. So since both have to be added in the total gate capacitance, so we say 2 C0W factor will come when we calculate the total gate capacitance and the total contribution from the overlaps. So that is why in this you will find that I, we have included two C naught W. Yeah, two is here, one uh, C naught W for drain side overlap contribution, and the other C naught W is for source side overlap contribution. Total gate capacitance is now this much. Now for resistive region, that is when the channel is formed or linear region. So here you see that the second plate is now the channel, not the bulk. So that is why we say that bulk contribution is zero. Now we have a uniform channel formed here. So that means now the source and drain side that is CGCS and CGCD. So they will be, you know, uh, have, having an equal share of the total uh, gate to channel capacitance. So total gate to channel capacitance was already seen on XWL. So the gate to channel via source and drain contribution will be equally divided. So we have CGCS as C ox WL by 2. Similarly, CGCD is also equal to C ox WL by 2. 
the total gate to channel capacitance is adding these two c of w l and the total gate capacitance by considering the overlap capacitances also is this much now similarly for saturation region okay where you have a channel which is extended okay up to this point right so that is you have some uh, from the contribution from the drain side also okay but you say that that contribution is uh, you know uh, since drain is not directly connected okay the source is only extended and it reaches the drain side but drain has no connection so we say that cg cd that is gate to channel capacitance from the drain side is zero okay? because drain is not connected anyway to the channel and cg cb again bulk is also not connected we say the entire uh, you know second plate is this only and uh, cg cs that is contribution from the source side this time is 2 by 3 ox 2 by 3 c ox times wl so this is a special case here 2 by 3 c ox wl so how this 2 by 3 c ox wl comes in so this was proposed in 1998 by uh, this author delhi okay so in our research paper he proposed in 1998 so this can be downloaded if somebody is interested how to uh, you know to know how this 2 by 3 uh, cox wl came in so he can download this paper from delhi in 1998 and can understand how this 2 by 3 uh, cox wl came in right so the total gate capacitance is now given by the contribution from this 2 by 3 cox wl plus the overlap capacitance now the most important regions in digital design uh, are we see these two operation that is saturation and the cutoff region so these two regions are important regions in digital design okay now these gate capacitances so these are non linear okay so if i want to make them uh, you know use them in digital ic design so that first order analysis can be done so a simplified model can be created where uh, the non linear resistance uh, sorry capacitance can be replaced by a constant capacitance value in each region of operation so similar to what we had done in dio diodes that is we had tried to linearize the junction capacitance of the diode so similarly here also in cutoff and saturation region the the non linear capacitances that is these values so they can be linearized so that they have constant values in these two regions that is cutoff and saturation so that can also be done so we'll see uh, using the same previous uh, uh, approach which we did in did for the pn junction diodes now the gate capacitance uh, versus vgs profile is also mentioned over here so in this profile vds is set to zero okay now this is gate to channel capacitance cgc okay now and this is vt point yeah threshold point so that means this is the point where vgs is zero so let me write this is vgs is equal to zero point so at vgs is equal to zero that is when channel is not formed okay so the gate to channel capacitance so that is uh, you know having a contribution for bulk only only so the total gate to channel capacitance at vgs is equal to 0 is wl c ox from this table you can again see so cut off you have total capacitance gate to channel as c ox wl so this is wl c ox then you have gate to channel uh, you know capacitance via source and drain so these contributions are not existing here in fact this starts when the vgs reaches vt okay so that is why this is not in the picture yet okay. now if you increase vgs from 0 to vt okay that is channel has started forming so as the channel starts for, uh, forming this cgcb that is which was earlier wlc ox at this point so this cgcb starts falling so this goes on yeah it, it goes down and when the channel is completely formed the cgcb contribution becomes zero because now it has bulk has no contribution to the channel so cgcb becomes zero at this point when the complete channel is formed okay but when the complete channel is formed now you have contribution from 
source and drain side and those contributions are equal to wl by 2 c ox okay so that is as soon as vgs increases above vt you have this contribution coming into picture okay and because of this contribution coming into picture your gate to channel capacitance which was earlier falling down it started increasing yeah, as soon as vgs reaches vt because these two contributions came into picture so this again started increasing and cgc that is gate to channel capacitance became equal to wlc ox again now this picture shows me a relationship between capacitance as a function of degree of saturation okay that is one represents completely saturated and maybe at this point it is not fully saturated maybe let's say in the middle it's not fully saturated i would say but at one that is when this ratio that is vds by vgs minus vt so this is one only when vds is equal to vgs minus vt okay so this relation that is x axis vds by vgs minus vt this is one only when vds is equal to vgs minus vt that is this is the point where uh, complete saturation or full saturation or degree of saturation is one or hundred percent okay this is 50 percent saturation point and this is zero that is when vds is zero okay this point is when vds is let me call it vds is equal to zero this point okay. now at vds is equal to zero that is when you don't apply any drain to source uh, bias so the total gate to channel capacitance is given by wlc ox right and it has only a contribution from channel not from bulk okay. so this is wlc ox similarly the total contribution from gate to channel via drain and source so that is equal to wl c ox by 2 because my channel is intact here because vds is zero i have not started increasing vds as i increase vds the channel also starts tapering okay so if you increase vds the channel okay if you increase this vds this channel also takes start you know starts taking a shape of a wedge to increase vds and if you make vds higher the channel also which was linear constant here earlier so it starts taking a shape of a wedge okay so that means the contribution from drain and source to the channel they also start changing okay and in fact when it is completely saturated okay, maybe at this point so i say okay so at this point so this 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 represents this one here that is completely saturated okay. so at this point my uh, total gate to channel capacitance via source that is contribution from source is 2 by 3 wlc and total gate to channel capacitance also 2 by 3 but cgcd that is from the drain side contribution so that keeps on going down and down and finally it becomes zero when the mosfet is fully saturated okay now one can also think of extracting these capacitances or gate capacitance via simulations okay so by using this relation and performing a transient uh, you know simulation one can find out the capacitance okay so how to do that maybe for finding out capacitance you need two things that is current and also uh, the vgs time varying vgs so two things you require here okay so for this maybe you can use this circuit okay where you have an nmos over here and you short or tie the drain and source terminal of this and then apply a current source over here okay so after applying the current source you try to measure vgs okay so simulation or transient simulation if you try to do you provide a current source and try to measure vgs at this point so vgs is known now current is also known so c can be calculated after some mathematical uh, you know manipulation so i know now i that is current because that is what is my source current source i applied and i measured vgs sorry vgs i measured dvgs by dt that is time varying voltage i measured and from these two quantities one can find out cg after some mathematical manipulation right or maybe cg 
VGS dependent CGS, CG which is dependent on VGS, so that can be given by this relation. Right? So this can be done via spice simulations also. So in fact, you will also do it via one another assignment. Right? So maybe this could be your assignment number four, where you will try to find out the uh, gate capacitance of NMOS and PMOS devices. Both separately, you will find out. Okay. And you will use the same CMOS and sorry NMOS and PMOS as were present in assignment number one uh, using spy simulation, right? And uh, then after uh, finding out the gate capacitances, you have to utilize those gate capacitances in the same CMOS inverter, and then find out the characteristics of the CMOS inverter, and if there are any differences which you see because of these get gate capacitances then uh, you can report those uh, gate capacitances and this is based on your uh, you know example number 3.9 in your textbook you can take reference of this example so maybe we can keep uh, the date for submission date for this as maybe let us say maybe 31st of September. So am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Let us say that the submission date is 31st of September. Sir, 26, 27, 28. We have session in November. Yes. Oh, sorry, November. sorry, November, correct, November. So it's October already running, so not 31st November, then it will be too late. Uh, maybe, let us say, 8th of November, Sunday. Let us say, 8th of November, Sunday. So you will connect simply a current source here and try to measure VGS, time varying VGS. Okay. And then via some mathematical manipulations, I mean, you have to again use your brain over here. So you will then calculate the gate capacitance. Okay. Now that was uh, the gate capacitance. Now let us also talk about the diffusion or the junction capacitance. Since here also in uh, MOSFET you have uh, junctions, that is drain junction and source body junction. So you have uh, you know capacitances arising from this junction also. Okay. So this capacitance is calculated by considering two things. One is the bottom plate junction. Okay. So for example, here this is my gate. Okay. This entire is my gate. And this is my source diffusion region. Yeah, this entire is my source diffusion region. And maybe let us extend this. And uh, this is my, let us say, drain. So we can extend this. So in fact, this is a MOSFET here. So here I have a MOSFET. Okay, so this can be extended. OK. So let us say that it looks like this somewhat. Yeah. So this is my source here, and this one is drain, and this is gate. Okay. Now two things are here while calculating the diffusion or junction capacitance. One is the bottom plate junction. First thing is bottom plate junction. That is, uh, this is my uh, source diffusion region. So I say that this is the bottom uh, portion of the source diffusion region. Now this bottom plate of the source diffusion region, this is making a junction, that is, uh, this is N type, this is N plus, and this substrate it's, is P type. Okay. So there is a junction over here. Okay. Now I have a capacitance between these two junctions, yeah, same junction capacitance. Maybe let me draw again at this model. So the bottom plate refers to this point here. And I have a junction capacitance over here. Yeah, this is my bottom plate. So I have a junction capacitance here. Right? 
so bottom plate junction that is uh, this pn junction and then second thing is side wall junctions so i have three side walls here in fact the fourth one that is which is towards the gate so there you don't have a junction because here you have a channel right and channel has uh, uh, you know uh, same type of impurities which the diffusion region has that is n type of impurities right electrons majority carrier so here you don't have a junction towards the channel so you don't consider this side okay in the side wall junction uh, uh, you know capacitance calculation but yes in the other sides you have three sides you have junctions and these junctions uh, you know arise from this channel stop implant you know, because you have this channel stop implant in, in these regions yeah this is my channel stop implant so similarly here also this one this region and this one also here so three sides i have this side wall junction because of this channel stop implant what is channel stop implant i'll just tell you okay. but yes this channel st stop implant is again a heavily doped p type region okay. so this is a heavily doped p type region around the drain or source yeah so that means somewhere here around the source and drain so you have a uh, channel stop implant so maybe here also you have in the 3d picture it, it will be more clear okay so you have uh, a channel stop implant that is a heavily doped p type region so why this channel stop implant is there i'll just tell you okay so two things that is bottom plate junction and the side wall junction so two things are there right now uh, the junction capacitance so that is calculated by uh using uh, you know the same junction capacitance as we had in the uh, diodes okay so the total diffusion capacitance has a contribution from this bottom plate junction capacitance and side wall junction capacitance so i say that total diffusion capacitance is equal to c bottom that is uh, the capacitance from the bottom plate junction and c side wall that is capacitance from the side wall junction so the bottom capacitance that is bottom plate capacitance can be calculated by using the junction capacitance multiplied by the area of the junction that is area of the source or drain okay and this junction capacitance is same that we used in diodes okay pn junction diodes so this junction capacitance is given by this relation that is cj not by 1 minus vd by phi not uh, to the whole power m right same junction because uh, you know the similar pn junction is formed here also as uh, had in we had in diode so bottom plate junction capacitance contribution is cj times the area of the source or drain plus csw that is side wall junction capacitance so this is given by cjsw that is junction capacitance of the side wall so this is again a foundry parameter industry parameter so industry pro provides this junction side wall capacitance this is different from the junction capacitance which is appearing at the bottom so this is side wall junction capacitance and this is multiplied by the perimeter of the source or drain so perimeter again here now consist consist of only three sides one this one and second this one and third this one fourth one this does not makes a junction at all okay because this is the channel side so no side wall junction appears here so that's why the perimeter is now 2 ls plus w that is ls is the length of the junction oh, sorry uh, source region okay so 2 ls one from this and one from this and w so this is 2 ls plus w so diffusion capacitance can be calculated using this relation cj ls w plus cj s w uh, times 2 ls plus w and cj s w is uh, you know a foundry parameter foundry provides us junction capacitance also is provided by the foundry now coming on to this channel stop implant so what it is now uh you know in a cmos or maybe in a ic you will find that many mosfets are uh, present okay. so for example here let us say you have two mosfets that is m1 and m2 now both are n channel they are present okay now in the same ic Uh, you provide uh, you know if you want to connect these m1 and m2 
you'll have to connect them via either the poly poly line generally uh, gates are connected and if you want to connect drains of one mosfet to the drains of or source of other mosfet then you will utilize metal one lines okay so let us say i want to connect uh, the gate of m1 and m2 so for this or maybe for any interconnect line or wire line you need to deposit a field oxide over the same ic okay so maybe in this region i deposit field oxide field oxide is the same silicon dioxide but the thickness is large okay so here the thickness is small but when i say field oxide so that means thickness would be large so why thickness would be large so there is again a reason i'll tell you so then after depositing field oxide you can deposit the metal lines which can be used for interconnections or wiring purpose okay now this thickness of oxide that is field oxide is thick so that it does not creates a channel over here right so you have ion type region here also and here also and if the thickness of this field oxide is not large then it is possible that this poly interconnect which is over this uh, you know sio2 that may create a inversion layer beneath the silicon dioxide and then maybe you will have another parasitic mosfet okay which you don't want but it may you know uh, be present because of this situation okay so that is why this field oxide that is silicon dioxide whenever you are trying to uh, you know layer this uh, poly for interconnect lines or maybe metal one for interconnection purpose the the insulating layer or dielectric layer is kept th thick and it is called now field oxide okay so the idea is to raise raise the vt of this transistor if sio2 is very thick here that this field oxide is thick then large potential will be required to create a inversion layer that is threshold voltage of this mosfet parasitic mosfet will be very high or very large okay now it is also possible that your wire that is this interconnect or poly line this is carrying sufficient enough voltage or potential to create a channel over here okay so what happens in that case if the potential across the interconnect line is high enough to create a channel though field oxide was there thickness was there but still it is possible that this line can create a inversion layer here now if this is created then i'll have unwanted connection between you know the, the these two n plus regions okay parasitic mosfet will be there now to to you know prevent that uh, what we do is we implant a heavily doped peep type region here in between these two regions n plus region so heavily doped p plus region or uh, you know acceptor impurities yeah, heavily doped acceptor impurities are uh you know implanted here okay so again the idea is that if you implant heavily doped acceptor impurities between these two regions then the vt of the mosfet that is threshold voltage of this mosfet parasitic mosfet that will be furthermore okay so that is the uh, point here so that is how uh, the channel stop implant comes into picture here so for example here Uh, you may assume that uh, i have n plus and n plus region over here okay two n plus regions here and then i have a n well also here sitting okay now i may have a parasitic uh, you know transistor between this n well and n plus region okay this n plus and n well region okay do i have a field oxide over here okay so then i i may have a interconnect line also here, over here on field oxide okay maybe here and this can create a channel in between n well and this region now to prevent this you uh, use this channel stop implant that is implant this region a thin layer of heavily doped uh, acceptor impurity so that the vt of this transistor is further raised uh, to a very high level okay so that is the purpose of channel stop implant to prevent the leakages uh, that may happen between the parasitic elements okay now uh this junction side wall capacitance let us talk about this one so this junction side wall capacitance this can further be calculated using this relation that is total side wall capacitance can be calculated by using the junction side wall capacitance multiplied by the junction depth so junction depth is also important that is this xj right so xj here is the junction depth that is this depth so this is xj 
how you know deep is your junction that is how deep your diffusions are there right so the total uh, side wall capacitance then will be modified so here you will include also this xj so you will say that total side wall capacitance is cj sw times xj times 2ls plus w okay so this can be modified by including this xj also that is junction depth uh, can also be brought into picture okay now uh, the next task is yeah any questions so can you please go to the previous slide okay this one yes sir the channel stop implant can you repeat please the channel stop implant oh channel stop implant this one so yes, channels yeah channel stop implant is for example this layer you see here so, so you, sir, the layer we created or it's automatically created by no it is not automatically created it is implanted okay sir it is implanted you, but you you said sir we implant sir between one yeah you have to implant this okay so this is an extra implantation it doesn't comes up automatically you have to create this by using you know again ion implantation technique so you have to deposit a layer here in between the two parasitic elements here sir you you said that we have to say, like implant a separate implant in between two and three season right so sir between that and parasitic inversion layer yeah so uh, these two were the actual uh, you know uh, mosfets okay and yes, in sir. between these the in, in between these two actual mosfets another mosfet could have been there okay in yes. fact it is there but you don't want these two regions to conduct that is these two n plus regions you don't want them to conduct it is already there okay because of the structure itself you know this defines a mosfet okay so to prevent this these two regions to conduct okay or this parasitic mosfet to conduct you implant the channel here with heavily doped p type impurity though p type impurity is already there in the substrate okay already the substrate is my p type you again make it more uh, heavily doped p type here okay so that the threshold voltage of this final transistor that can be you know more high though it is already high because of this thick field oxide now you make it further more high if you implant this channel stop implant so that is the purpose of basically channel stop implant to prevent conduction of uh, conduction between undesirable regions in an ic okay. so sir, next uh, yeah next uh, sir uh, yeah please sir i i had a doubt please 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 Uh, the overlap area present between the gate and source or gate or drain okay uh, yeah yes sir this overlap area hmm. does it increases the efficiency of uh, mosfet efficiency of the mosfet yes sir matlab working capability of performance no, we, we don't want this we, so we that, don't want this to happen but this actually is present because you know the process uh, because of the process uh you know this comes up and so process is not that much good so that is how when you implant these impurities i mean the ion implantation is not very accurate so you try to implant this but instead of stopping at this point it you know uh goes under the gate also okay so this is a deficiency of the process we don't want this okay when well, it is like a defect we don't want this idea yeah, it is a defect we don't want this So, but in implantation, we can uh, like we can calculate the depth from which the yeah depth can be created. This depth can be created. No issues. Yes. Right, but you know you cannot prevent the source and diffusion regions. You know they go under the gate also. When you try to implement, you, impl you know implant, you want to stop them at this point itself, but uh, because of the deficiency in this process, it you know. Goes under the gate from both the sides, 
so we don't want this we want to stop the channel uh, sorry the source and drain diffusion regions we want to stop them here itself at the gate so it is undesirable okay sir okay thank you sir yeah so the next thing is we want to linearize the junction capacitance similar to what we had done in case of the diode okay so since these are uh, non linear capacitance we want to replace them by linear capacitance that is we want to have some constant values in the desirable regions of operation so for that we need to again calculate this k equivalent okay and this k equivalent is again i have simply copied from the same equation 3.4 previous equation which was valid for the diode so once you find k equivalent you can multiply k equivalent with the zero bias junction capacitance to find out the equivalent uh, you know capacitance okay. so this is again from the same uh, diode section i have simply copied them to just give you an overview of this thing that is you have you have to define your high and low op uh, operating regions Okay, in digital, we have two regions, high and low. And uh, for high and low, you again calculate the charges in the MOSFET, and then you calculate the K equivalent. Okay, and then you multiply with with CJ naught to find out C equivalent. And this is K equivalent is the same 3.11 equation from the diode section. So no change in the equation, same equation. So the overall, you know, contribution from the capacitances in a mosfet can be further uh, uh, you know divided into these part that is you can say cgs that is gate to source capacitance is now equal to gate to channel capacitance with contribution from source side plus gate to source overlap capacitance similarly gate to drain capacitance this is equal to cgcd plus cgdo similarly cgcb that is gate to bulk capacitance this can be equal to gate to channel capacitance with the contribution from bulk if cut off it is in cut off then bulk contribution will be there otherwise it will be contributed from gate to channel and gate to sorry gate to source and gate to drain similarly source to bulk that is source diffusion cap capacitance drain to bulk capacitance which is also called drain diffusion capacitance so these two uh, capacitances i think source diffusion capacitance and drain diffusion capacitance this you had uh, extracted from the layout i think yeah? and then we have utilized also these two capacitance that is source diffusion and drain diffusion capacitance but gate capacitance you haven't utilized yet so this gate capacitance you will calculate okay uh, from uh, that simulation which i showed you and then utilize this in the cmos inverter simulation okay these two you have already done drain to bulk and source to bulk this you have calculated from the layout but gate capacitance you will calculate by using the simulation of this mosfet using this circuit okay now uh, there is an exercise maybe uh, this you can also do so here you can calculate i mean uh, using these parameters you have to find out the zero bias value of all relevant capacitances these parameters are given that is oxide oxide thickness channel length width then uh, you have drain uh, length source length overlap capacitance zero bias junction capacitance zero bias junction sidewall capacitance all these values are given now it is asked to calculate all the capacitances which are present in the mosfet that is all these capacitances you have to calculate using these values okay so how do you do this so again uh, you can do it by you know simply saying that uh, your uh, you know junction capacitance yeah first of all the total junction capacitance so that can be given by this relation that is cj not ld times w so you just plug in the values you will get this then junction side wall capacitance so this cjs w0 is given to you and ld is also given to you w is also given so this you can calculate okay then the overlap capacitance total okay, which you will multiply it with wc not to find out the total overlap capacitance from the source and drain side and the gate to channel capacitance or gate to bulk capacitance which is equal to wl c ox times wl times c ox and epsilon x that is c ox you will calculate using this Epsilon ox by T ox. Okay. 
so this is a simple exercise i think you can try this in fact this is a solved example in your textbook so please uh, try to uh, you know find out these numbers now this table is also very useful and this table yeah i'll just end up maybe after this table i'll just end up so this table tells us about the capacitance in 0.25 micron cmos process okay. so for example a nmos mosfet will have these values of the capacitances for example oxide capacitance overlap capacitance junction capacitance then uh, this is uh, mj uh, that is uh, grading factor of the junction then uh, this is 5b that is built in potential cjsw mjsw 5b is all yeah. so all these values are given for a 0.25 micron cmos for uh, process for both nmos and pmos so we'll utilize all these values later on when we uh, go on to solve uh, you know some problems based on this mosfet based on this so i'll stop here so uh, let can this well yeah any queries so we all have can this values also it is for reference hello yeah so if you have any queries then maybe you can ask otherwise sir please sir yeah please sir i, want to, sir, I, I want have a ask. query sir sir yeah, please please ask Sir, sir, regarding the uh, regarding the assignment which you gave the assignment number two, uh, while calculating fan out, uh, I came across the formula that fan out high is I O H by I I H and fan out low is I O L by I I L. So, sir, um, anywhere I am in the net or in the book, I am not able to understand what what these uh, terms are I O H and I I H like B O H and B O L. Yeah, I think you don't need this, and just uh, you know stick to what we have re read. there are many textbooks and they say many things so this is the standard book that we are following and i think you have sufficient knowledge and sufficient information about you know how to calculate the fan out so just stick to the basics that we have read right okay sir so don't go through you know this ioh and iol i don't know what what are they and where did you found them so but yeah there may be some process of finding using those values but yes we are not You know there are many methods of finding. So one of the methods we had already discussed. So maybe you can utilize the same method to find out fan out. So sir, these terms comes when uh, we implement um, uh, loads, sir, different loads to calculate fan out. So sir, uh, in this assignment too, when we are calculating fan out, we have to uh, implement uh, inverters in load also, sir, to calculate the fan out. Yeah, definitely. Unless you uh, you know attach the loads. how you will know that uh, you know the final values are uh, okay or not yeah so if you don't attach the load you will not know the fan out so keep on increasing the load and you will see that output levels are degrading so okay sir so it's starting from the one and we keep on increasing the load and then we check out the, the so that the is one button. one way that is one way and the other way is that if you can calculate the output the current at the output and the current requirement of the inverter right so total current that at the output and total current requirement of an inverter so for example total current at the output available is 10 ampere and the requirement of one inverter is that at least 1 ampere input current should be present so at least so that means you cannot connect more than 10 inverter of such kind so that defines your fan out so this is the other approach right by using the output and input current which i think shubham was also uh, concerned he saw somewhere in some textbook yeah any other thing yeah sir i i was also recording the output currents and corresponding input currents uh, yeah, correct so uh, that, that, that is also a, uh, you know another procedure so you can do that also so but for that you need to find out the current okay yes yeah, sir okay yeah, any other thing one more thing for regenerative property in the assignment 2 do we have to add some noise or uh, uh, something like that in the input because that uh, after, uh, you said that in the lecture that uh, some noise get added and after n number of stages that uh, uh, noise is filtered out and we get the original input yeah so as, equ uh, equivalent of a noise would be that you provide the input levels which are already 
uh, you know uh, below the desired levels maybe if you want to okay, let's okay. say apply five so instead of applying five apply three words okay right? yeah 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 anything else uh, hello sir yeah please please uh, sir while calculating the uh, gate to bulk capacitance in case of saturation mm -hmm. in in case of saturation channel is tapered okay so does not does not in that area the channel tapered in that area uh, there should not be a uh, gate to bulk capacitance uh in the tapered area right zero sir yeah in the i mean uh, you want to uh, say that why the contribution from drain is zero yes sir i mean the region where the not, channel not, is not not drain not, not okay yes, source sir, side yes. where the drain side or source side drain side yeah, when drain the channel side. is tapered yeah, correct i mean ideally yes. should be there so there must be a contribution from gate to channel via channel and gate to bulk via the bulk yeah gate to channel via bulk ideally yes sir isn't it so it should be okay. i mean you mean to say that it should be from gate to bulk via the bulk itself and gate to channel via channel itself so that is correct it should be yes sir so these all you know uh, things have been discussed in that paper which i told you so better if you want to know how that 2 by 3 cox wl kind of thing came in so read that paper so obviously it should be there okay sir and capacitance via bulk and capacitance via channel itself okay yeah anything else so uh, let us end the meeting then and we'll meet then uh, tomorrow or maybe day after tomorrow we have a class yeah so let us end the meeting okay thank you sir